Today we have another lovely story from friend of the show, José Molino Marco. You'll learn some new vocabulary and improve your listening comprehension. Welcome to Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. Hello, and if you're a new listener to the podcast, you're very, very welcome. And if you have come back again this week, it's lovely to have you with us. My name's Craig. And my name's Reza. And together we have 50 years of teaching experience between us, and we're going to use that to help you improve your English and take it to the next level. How are you doing, Reza? Well, I'm okay. I'm okay. Although I am feeling a bit down, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, that's that's perfectly understandable. Do you want to share the sad news with the listeners this week? Yes, I'm afraid to say, and I know he had a lot of fans, that Coco is no longer with us. I'm afraid we had to send him to sleep a few days ago. So Coco, perhaps the world's first podcasting dog, um, is no longer with us. So you can imagine we're very down about that. But you know what? He had a good life and uh, he was well looked after. And um, whether he liked it or not, he listened to a lot of my podcasts because I forced him to. So <laughs> he, was, he was an alcoholic. He was often sitting next to us at your feet while we recorded in your flat. So he was very much part of the podcast. And you've heard before, if you're a long time listener, you've heard some barks that I used to put in the podcast when we mentioned Coco's name. Sadly, we, we can't do that anymore because he's, he's not with us. He's up podcasting in the sky, but he's going to be missed, especially by, by you, but by me and the listeners for sure. So poor Coco. But life goes on, so let's get down to business, Craig. What are we talking about this week? Yes, we've received another lovely story from José, who has sent some stories to us in the past. And José did also record the story that he wrote and sent a audio file of the story. But I have adapted José's story slightly, and we're going to read it also, so Jose, you might find it useful to compare your original recording with the recording you're going to hear now on the podcast, and also compare the text that you sent, the written text, compare that to the story that we're going to publish in the podcast show notes at inglespodcast.com slash 449, and take note of some small differences in the way we've improved the text and the way that we're going to improve some pronunciation of some of the words as well. I, I hope you'll find that useful. But before we ask you some comprehension questions to improve your listening comprehension, let's look at some of the trickier words, the more difficult words that appear in Jose's story. For example, he speaks about a train in the story and he speaks about the coach of a train. So the coach, C-O-A-C-H, you may have heard used as a similar word to bus. A coach is a bus for long distances and it's often more comfortable. But it's also used to speak about the individual compartments of a train. So you can call those compartments coaches of the train or carriages sometimes, the carriage of a train. Yes, and both of those words existed before trains or any motorized vehicles were invented. In fact, those words go way back to the days of horses, horses being the main uh, you know, form of transport. So a coach or a carriage was a vehicle originally drawn by, that means pulled by horses. So when trains were invented, we simply brought the word over to describe one part of a train, but without the horses. And then after that, when um, motor vehicles were invented, we took the word coach to describe, as Craig said, a bus, which goes on long, long trips as well. So it's an old word. It's not a new word. Another old, old word is a satchel. Let me spell that. 
S A T C H E L, a very important word in Jose's story. For you, Craig, what's a satchel? A satchel is a bag, and I had a satchel a long time ago when I went to school. It was made of leather, so it was a leather satchel, and I used to take my school books to school in this satchel. Did you have a satchel, or did you just have a normal sports bag? No, I had a satchel when I when I was younger. So, as Craig says, you think of a more kind of old-fashioned kind of a school bag. Originally made out of leather, although it doesn't have to be these days, I guess. But that kind of old-fashioned school bag that you probably put over your shoulder, that would be a satchel. Maybe it has two buckles on it, perhaps. Yeah. A buckle, like, so you open and close it the same way as a belt around your waist. A kind of classic satchel would have that, wouldn't it? Yeah, in fact, you don't see many satchels these days because they are a bit old-fashioned and you might think, oh, that bag looks a bit strange. Now, another word for strange is odd, O-double-D. So if a person looks unusual or strange, you could say, look at that odd man or odd woman over there. Or that's a bit odd means that's a bit strange or unusual. And if you see someone or something odd, you might be tempted to stare at them. S-T-A-R-E. To stare is a verb to do with looking. There are many ways of looking in English. And to stare is to look at something in a very fixed way because it's strange or because it fascinates you. There's a similar word, which is to gaze. G-A-Z-E. That also means to look at something in a fixed way because it's strange or fascinating or perhaps mysterious. Or another common use of gaze is to gaze into the eyes of the person you love. If you really love someone, you might gaze into their eyes. You look in such a way that suggests that you're almost lost while looking at them, lost in your own thoughts. These days, I tend to gaze through baker's windows at chocolate cakes, thinking, hmm, gazing at that. So the difference between stare and gaze is maybe explained better with examples. So if you see a strange person, you might stare at them. So you're looking, as Reza said, in a fixed way at that person, and you're not moving your eyes, you're you're just staring without moving your head or your eyes. But you might gaze out of the window thinking about nothing in particular, just looking at the sky and the clouds, that you're just gazing out of the window. So there is a difference between those two words. Yeah, I think I think you've got a good point there. I didn't think about that. When you, Whenever you gaze into the baker's window, I know you, you're not going to be just looking at the chocolate eclairs. You're also going to be looking at the brownies, the chocolate biscuits. So he's not just fixed on one thing. His eyes are moving around <laughs> in a crazy way between the eclairs, the brownies, the chocolate biscuits, the sponge. He's gazing at all of those things. With love. And then staring at my big stomach and deciding to keep on walking and not go in the shop. Uh, Another expression that uh, Jose uses is the phrasal verb to put someone off. Now, if you're concentrating on something, imagine you're playing a game of billiards, snooker, darts. You're trying to do something in a concentrated way and Reza is next to you, pushing you and laughing at you and speaking to you. He's putting you off. He's trying to distract you from what you're doing. So you might be watching a game of football, but your young son or daughter is putting you off the game by playing around and shouting and screaming. So to put someone off is to stop them from doing something. Another expression we got with prepositions is to be down on your luck. If you're down on your luck, Basically, it means you're unlucky at the moment. You're not having a good time. You've had a lot of bad luck. A lot of unfortunate things have happened to you. You are down on your luck. Another expression Jose uses is to be transfixed. T-R-A-N-S-F-I-X-E-D. You can see these words in the show notes at inglespodcast.com slash 449. If you are transfixed by something, 
then you are motionless. You can't move. You are almost paralyzed. That could be with fright, with horror, or with excitement and wonder. Or maybe you're astonished by something. For example, I was waiting at the bus stop and there was a beautiful girl standing next to me. I was transfixed by her beauty. I was amazed and captivated by how beautiful she was. Is that true, Craig? Because the last time I saw you transfixed, you were gazing through the baker's window at those <laughs> cakes. You, I, I, I tried to move him along. He said, come on, Craig, we've got to go. But, but he just wouldn't move. He was transfixed. He couldn't take his eyes off them. I think you're trying to put me off from explaining this vocabulary, Reza. We have one expression left, which is a phrasal verb, isn't it, Reza? Yes. Uh, so that's a verb with a preposition, to pull away. Now, a phrasal verb can quite often have more than one meaning. In this context, we're talking about transport, vehicles. So if a train or a bus or a car or, or a taxi, indeed, pulls away, whenever the vehicle is going slowly or perhaps it's stopped, and then it creates a distance. In other words, it speeds up or it moves away from a stationary position, it pulls away. So imagine there were two cars traveling side by side at 20 miles per hour, but one of the cars was a Lamborghini, and suddenly, boom, he hit the accelerator and he pulled away at 90 miles an hour. So suddenly, the driver of the Lamborghini created a big distance between him and the other driver. He pulled away. I think that's a skill that bus drivers learn at bus driving school when they look in their mirror and they see someone running for the bus because the bus is waiting at the bus stop. They don't move immediately. They wait until just before the person reaches the bus. They give you hope that you're going to catch the bus and then they pull away and leave you at the bus stop. Yeah, I, I think you're so right, Craig. I'm convinced I've actually seen bus drivers faces in the mirror in the wing mirror winking at you They're kind of yes. like they wait till they see the Smiling. whites of my eyes yes. and then they smile and they pull away yeah they, because there's no pleasure unless you know that they're looking at you. That's where they get the pleasure from. But you can't prove anything. You can't prove it, and they know it. They learn it at bus driving school. If there's any bus drivers listening, you know exactly what I mean. Now, those are the words that um, may cause difficulty during Jose's story. A coach of a train, a satchel, something that's a little odd, means a little strange, to stare and to gaze at something, to put someone off, to be down on your luck, to be transfixed by something, and to pull away. Now, we're going to read four comprehension questions that we would like you to answer as you're listening. And you can go to inglespodcast.com slash 449 to see these questions written. But if you're in the gym or driving or cleaning your car or doing something else then we'll read these questions for you so what's question number one reza number one why did the old man need to tell his story quickly why did the old man need to tell his story quickly question number two what happened to the old man's parents and brother when he was young again what happened to the old man's parents and brother when he was young? The third question is this. What did the old man do with the satchel when it was given to him? I'll repeat that. What did the old man do with the satchel when it was given to him? And the final question. What happened at the end of the story? What happened at the end of the story? So now listen to The Old Satchel by José Molino Marco. I 
was waiting for the train in the underground station. After a while, I could hear the sound of the train approaching, and then I saw the light of the first coach appearing in the darkness of the tunnel. I got on the train. The coach was almost full of people. I sat down in one of the few free seats. In front of me, there was a young mother with her son, who looked about eight years old. On the side of her, there was a good-looking elderly man who had an old leather satchel on his lap. I noticed that every so often, the boy leaned over and stared at the old satchel, which seemed a little odd to me. His mother appeared a little uncomfortable about the behaviour of a child and apologised to the elderly man. This didn't put the boy off and he kept leaning over more often to stare at the satchel. His mother told him off again in a low voice. Just as the child's mother apologised yet again, a labourer in dirty work clothes who had been sitting in front of the old man, stood up to get off the train. The boy immediately jumped up from his seat and ran to this new free seat before somebody else could take it. Sitting there, he could see the old leather satchel more easily. The train continued on its way to the next stop. The kid couldn't help staring at the satchel, And the elderly man politely said to his mother, It seems that the boy likes this old satchel. The mother said, Yes, it does. Can I tell him the story of this old satchel? The man asked. Yes, please, as long as this story finishes before the next two stops. She replied. So the old man asked the kid if he wanted to know the story, and the boy nodded very excitedly. The boy stared at him, and the nice old man, with his well-combed grey hair, started the story. Many years ago, when I was not much older than you are now, I was living in a small village with my parents. My family were down on their luck. My father drank too much, and he lost his job. As a result, he started to drink even more. This ruined his life completely. My mother had a complicated pregnancy and felt ill all day. We didn't even have money to buy food, but we all loved each other. I knew my parents loved me a lot. I wanted to help them, and in spite of my young age, I started to look everywhere for a job. I didn't know what to do to help my parents. Out of desperation, I did something very wrong in a grocery store. And as a result, I was sent to a reform school far away from my home. I was happy there, not because it was a good place to stay, but because my parents didn't have to take care of me and I had something to eat every day. A little later, I was told that my father had passed away because of cancer, and my mother had also died giving birth to my brother, who sadly did not survive either. At this moment, the train stopped in the next station. The boy gazed open-eyed at the old man. He was transfixed by his story. The next minute, the train pulled away again on its way to the next station. The old man would have enough time to finish the story, so he continued. When my parents died, I was alone. I didn't have a family. I only had one or two friends in the reform school. I was a lonely boy, with no real home, trying to behave myself and stay out of trouble. One day, I was sitting under the only tree there was in the small school garden, when an old man, like I am now, came to me 
with this same old satchel. I don't know why, but it really interested me at once. Hi, he said to me. What are you doing? Then I answered him. I'm hanging out, just passing the time. Actually, I'm wasting my time doing nothing. I can see that, the old man replied. And this is the reason I'm here. I want to give you this old, empty satchel. I know you're alone, but I'm sure you'll know how to fill it with books that will help you to move forward and get through this particular period of your life. He handed me the satchel, and I took it. That same day, I began to take books from the Reform School Library, and since then, I've never stopped reading. I went to college and became a teacher. I've been a teacher all my life. The boy was smiling, and his mother said, I'm sorry, but we have to go. The train's slowing down. We've got to get off at the next stop. Thank you for sharing this lovely story. Do you know, I've been carrying the satchel around with me to pass it on to somebody who deserves it, said the teacher. Now, I'm sure that your boy is the right person. The teacher showed the satchel to the mother and said, Can I? Please? I don't understand what's happening here. She replied, But you're right to think that my son is perhaps the right person. The mother moved closer and lowering her voice so that her son couldn't hear, said, Our family situation is a bit different, but strangely quite similar to yours. I can't explain much more to you now, but please, I would appreciate it a lot if you would pass the satchel on to my boy. The teacher, smiling, handed the satchel to the boy, who, wide-eyed with excitement, took it happily and said to the teacher, Thank you, sir. When the train pulled away, the teacher was sitting, with his eyes closed, smiling happily. So, thank you very much, Jose, for sending that story. Now we're going to give you the answers to the comprehension questions, which, of course, you'll also find in the show notes, inglespodcast.com slash 449. Reza, what's the answer and question, number one? Well, just to refresh your memory, the first question was, why did the old man need to tell his story quickly? And the answer was, the mother and the boy had to get off the train in two stops. Number two, the question was, what happened to the old man's parents and brother when he was young? And the answer, sadly, they all died. They passed away. Question number three was, what did the old man do with the satchel when it was given to him? And the answer is, he filled it with books from the library. And what happened at the end of the story? Obviously, it was passed on. So the old man gave the satchel to the boy and they were both very happy. Thank you, Jose, for your work in sending that to us. And I hope our reading of it and the text that's in the show notes has helped you to improve a little. But it was a very engaging and entertaining story. Thank you. Yes, I really had a good image, a visualization of the story in my mind when I was reading it. It was because Jose used so many useful descriptive phrases. He used plenty of adjectives, adverbs, and other colorful phrases like that. That's what really brings a story to life. And also he used a nice mixture of verb tenses, some present simple, continuous, some past continuous, past perfect, past simple. All those things really brought the story to life. 
And there was a, a story arc, which is very common on Arcos. So there was the mystery at the beginning. Who's the old man? What's the deal? What's happening with the satchel? And then the story. And then obviously at the end, the payoff, which means the result, which in this case was very positive, that it ended well and there's a good feeling that everybody was happy the boy and the old man. But now it's your turn to practice your English. We would love to hear from you. Do you have a story that's similar to Jose's and you'd like us to feature it on the podcast? Or perhaps you have an idea or a suggestion for a future episode. Reza, how can people reach us by voice message? You could record your voice on an audio and send it via speakpipe.com slash English podcast. You'll see a link in the show notes to that. Craig, if people would prefer to write, how can they get in touch? You can reach me. I'm Craig, C-R-A-I-G, at com. And for Reza, write to Belfast Reza, R-E-Z-A, at gmail.com. And this podcast is sponsored in part by Mansion Inglés. I write material for Mansion Inglés. If you would like free courses and material, go there. And if you would like a paid course, visit the online store at store, S-T-O-R-E, dot mansioninglés.net. As we do at the end of every episode, we'd like to thank all those people who donate money to us through the Patreon scheme. That's... P-A-T-R-E-O-N, Patreon. What they do is they donate as little as $1.20 per month. The 20 cents is for VAT tax. And to say thank you for their donation, we give those people instant access to complete audio transcriptions so they can see every single word we said. If you're interested, have a look at the link in the show notes. It's patreon.com slash English podcast. We don't have time to thank everybody who is supporting us on Patreon, but we do appreciate your support. But we are going to say thank you to recent Patreon supporters who have joined us this month, and they are Yasmin Cagle, Josemi, Daniel Valencia Gomez, Jose Luis Anselmi, and Honorio Lisboa Neto. Thank you to you and to everybody who continues to support us on Patreon. We don't know what we're going to be talking about next week, but there will be an episode published next Sunday, we promise. Until then, thank you very much for listening this week. Have a lovely week. Until next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's bye-bye from me. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later.